Hey, what's up, people? I'm IGP, and welcome back to Subnautica. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Arctic DLC, of course, and all of the latest information that we have regarding the content of the DLC, as well as my own speculation of said information and content. We got brand new information, new concept art, new creatures in those concept arts. Now, for those who don't want any spoilers, I have no idea where anyone would deem spoilers to begin. So I'll start this video off by saying, if you don't want to be spoiled, leave the video now. In the description below, I will have links to a bunch of other stuff regarding Subnautica if you are interested in watching me play the game. Otherwise, stick around and I hope you enjoy the video. So first things first, straight to the wiki. There we go. Expansion pack. Whoa, 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 whoa. That effect is way too high, dude. Turn that down. We don't want to be obvious that we're ripping this off from someone, right? Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudgy, nudge. Come on, dude. Turn down the effect. It's way too much. Let's add some bubbles, too, for effect. There we go. Beautiful. Anyway, welcome to the expansion pack wiki page, packed full of expansion goodness. As it states here again, once again, the expansion pack is an upcoming paid DLC for Subnautica. However, the date in which it's going to be released says the full release date is currently planned for mid-2019, as opposed to what I believe it was before, which was early 2019. So at the point that we are now, the DLC is said to release sometime in a year. In my experience, this will be the longest wait for a DLC that I've ever heard of, but I'm sure it'll be worth it. Now, the Arctic biome itself is now being called just the Arctic, which would make a lot of sense, right? This is the Arctic page on the Subnautica wiki, and the Arctic is going to take up majority, as it states here, a vast majority of the playable area. And we'll get to that in a second, but that means that there will be additional biomes or areas to explore that aren't directly tied to the Arctic. Now, this is the concept art, the first piece of concept art here that we have that's new. This is a top view of the Arctic, in which you can see the character, which, by the way, will, of course, be female. This concept art was done just for the aesthetic purposes and revealing some interesting information about the playable area. But as you can see here, we do have some birds in the sky, some fauna. They do kind of look structurally the same as the ones we saw in the regular or the original playable area, which I don't remember the names of because I didn't pay too much attention to them because they're not important, okay? Never had to interact with them, except that one time I was flying on them. Uh, I would show a clip right here if I had the time and dedication to find the video. If you guys know where that clip is, you can post it down in the comments and I'm sure we'll all enjoy it. Nonetheless, I can't remember the name, but it looks anatomically similar to that creature. However, I always recall back in the early access trailer, there was a particular bird that we have not actually seen in game just yet. And on the wiki, it states that it is something that could be potentially in an expansion. It is called the large bird. It says the large bird closely resembles the sky ray, but is much less compact. I guess the sky ray is what I was just talking about. The large bird has two very large wings measuring about four times the length of their main body section. A tail even longer than their wings trails behind the large bird, ending with a triangular vein. On the other side of the large bird's body are two small legs similar to those of the sky ray. The head of the large bird is very blunt and doesn't appear to have a beak. Most of the large bird's body is a greenish white color. There are patches of black on the tips and front edges of their wings on the tail vein and on their underside stretching from the head to the base of the tail. And you can see the tails on some of these extending way beyond what the sky ray even has. So I can't say that's confirmation, but it definitely looks like a possibility. What I really find interesting about this piece of concept art is the what seems to be fungi mushroom type deal almost looks like the kush zone with the bulbs they look like they're just sprouting out of the ground but what's really cool is that if you look to the far left you can see that it seems like either a they are coming all the way from the bottom in a i guess an arctic biome underneath which by the way kind of makes sense wouldn't it if this is the arctic area there perhaps could be multiple biomes in the arctic Anyway, so this could be sprouting up from an underwater area and cracking through the ice, protruding itself upward, as most plants do, because they need their energy from the sunlight, and they also grow opposite of gravity. Science lessons! It's possible that those are potentially its roots. I mean, it is obviously its roots, but who knows if this is growing 
in any particular direction. I guess we won't know until we play. Also, they're freaking huge. Look at the size of our player and look at the size of these bulbs. I can't tell if they're maybe iced over and maybe white isn't its normal color. It looks rather red on the inside. Probably very dangerous for our character. Again, fine. They're willingly here. Don't forget, this isn't a survival expansion. We're not going to be thrown into the Arctic area in a life pod struggling to survive. We're going to have everything that we need. At least I hope we are devs. And we are here willingly to do research and discover more on this planet. So this guy not wearing a helmet. Mm precautionary measures being taken very seriously now in the back you can kind of see some very odd structures now i understand that's the background of this concept art and being that it is concept art it's probably not detailed as much as it should be or needs to be you can kind of see what seems like a ice bridge of sorts and then two potential attachments this could be tying in with the twisty bridges biome which i'll talk about next or or let's use our imagination here this entire hump and those things make up some kind of crazy giant leviathan in the background and this dude is looking at it terrified because subnautica has gone lovecraftian and now he is going to be in a catatonic state for the remainder of his life, which is probably very short, considering that these birds are circling around him, it seems like, ready to feast upon his dead flesh. Now, I know I'm reaching, I know I'm reaching, but this is what we do, right? We like to speculate and use our imagination. It's possible, guys, can you imagine? I would love for that to be in the game. Inevitable death staring at a creature that you just don't have any comprehension of and are not allowed to have any knowledge or comprehension of, and so you become catatonic and you die a very slow, painful, horrible death either by animals eating you or just the slow decay of your mortal life due to starvation, dehydration, hypothermia likely. I'm going off way too hard on this. I'm going to stop now and let's move on. Now here is another beautiful piece of concept art. This actually has the Cyclops in it, which by the way, there's a disclaimer on this. The Cyclops is likely not going to be in the Arctic expansion. Now, a lot of people are wondering why that is not the case. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But let's admire the beauty of this concept art. And let's admire where this Cyclops is headed to. Because that is a giant cavern. So not only are we going to be underneath and above, we can also go into giant caverns which will likely be, in my mind, their own category or biome. Now, what's interesting to me is that you can see there are waterfalls of sorts, and they're not frozen. You can see on the right-hand side, this one has a bit of motion blur to indicate motion. So that means two possibilities, could be more, but the two that I can think of is A, there are bodies of water on top, something either heating up an area and that water is pouring over, or that this planet is also under the same circumstances our planet is and that the arctic areas of our world are getting a little bit warmer so that it starts to melt and water will pour over i believe as far as i know now i'm i'm likely wrong on this but as far as i know this is the only time you'll see waterfalls like this in an arctic area in our world Otherwise, if the temperature were to stay the same, you shouldn't be seeing anything melting. Now, one of those two are likely true. I'm just not sure which one. If you guys have any ideas of what other possibilities there could be, let me know. This could be telling. It's not a bad thing. It could be very telling about what potentially is on the surface that we are to be exploring when the time comes. Now, the cavern he's entering in is massive, and it has this aura coming from it likely going to be beautiful and i feel again as we talked about in the previous episode of the arctic dlc i feel like there's going to be a lot of of uh, disguise and facades in this expansion that every creature we've seen so far seems to be friendly on the outside but once they strike or once you get too close it's terror and i wonder very deeply if this entire arctic area will reflect that now regarding the cyclops the cyclops not being likely not being in the arctic expansion it really does kind of make sense to myself mainly because the cyclops was given as a blueprint so we've gathered blueprints and fragments to learn how to make it 
that would accommodate someone trying to survive on this planet. Now, we are willingly participating in an excavation, I guess, or a research mission to go to this planet, likely not needing such a survivalist type submarine. We already know we're going to be getting something like the hovercraft, which is going to be helping us in many ways, I imagine, much more suitably for what we're doing. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of surviving in this game. It is a survival game after all, but our mission and the resources that we're bringing with it wouldn't call for having such a submarine that's my opinion what do you guys think and as you can see on the side here's some birds which are i believe the exact birds that we have in the regular area so that's really nothing new they're everywhere actually they're at the top i didn't even notice that beautiful stuff now this this is something that i can truly truly appreciate it's a beautiful picture this is actually done by Corey strader himself but this is a beautiful depiction of the Arctic with the exosuit, which I don't think also will be in the expansion. But as you can see, you got a lot of detail in the, the ice. We have mountains in the background, so the ice is practically endless. But it also makes you think, is that are those mountains entirely made of ice, or have they been iced over and this was once land? This would indicate that there's potentially land, and of course, with the twisty bridges biome, again, we'll talk about in a second, that could very well indicate that there's going to be different types of biomes and different land biomes attached to this. Nonetheless, it is beautiful. But one thing you have to take notice in this, if you haven't already seen this, by the way, which it's, it's kind of old at this point, but as you can see, there are holes. It seems to be like rather perfectly sculpted out areas, right? as if something had been carving areas out, could potentially be the water rising and falling. But we're gonna use our imagination, right? Because if you look much farther down, you'll notice there's something deep underneath us, just silently strolling through the frigid waters. It's a beast of enormous size. And truly, I don't I don't know what to think. This thing is incredibly massive, and it scares me. Incredibly enticing in its own right, but absolutely deterring for me to want to go into the waters. I don't know how much my crew, my my team, my the organization I work for, whatever I'm doing, I'm not sure that they know exactly everything that's going on here. And that's why we're here for research, right? So I'm walking into a trap, for sure. So this will turn to survival very quickly. Would you swim at this thing? Let me know in the comments below. This seems like it could potentially be the water rising up. Clearly, very clearly, this water, the body of water right here, is a much warmer temperature to stay in its liquid form. Therefore, if the tides were to rise due to the moon, that will slowly start to melt off a certain area. And this could be the height of those tides rising. And that's fine. That's fine. These concept arts are put up as a teaser for us to talk about the game and keep the hype up. So that's what we're doing. All right. So back at the expansion pack page, we can go down and see, again, the confirmed features being the Arctic itself, the new protagonist being the female protagonist, the penguin-like creature, the glow whale, the Vesper, which is the basically the space elevator, the twisty bridges, the spike trap, which I'm not sure why exactly that's been confirmed, and a new not yet known vehicle, which is like likely the hovercraft, and of course the potential features being the squid shark, the rock puncher, the arctic reefback leviathan, the pinnacarid, and the weather system, all of course which is being experimented with, may not be in the final build, in fact all of this stuff is subject to change. Nothing is 100%, anything can change at any time, and we have a full year it seems, until we're going to see the final content. So likely all of this could change. Now, if we go down here, we can see that, look at this, the alien penguin uh, has some more art regarding it. When it attacks, its eyes close. But in my mind, that is an open eyeball. That is a bare naked eyeball staring into my very soul with the purest form of liquid evil. I mean, if that doesn't scare the hell out of you, I don't know what's wrong with you. That is absolute nightmare fuel. Again, cute as a button, 
than terrifying. Why does it have to be such a harsh transformation? They couldn't just leave the eyeball alone. And now it has to close and look like a human eyeball or other eyeballs that we can connect with as humans to recognize different facial patterns and determine someone's intent, someone's emotional instability. And now we have to think, my God, I'm going to die of fear before I actually die from the wounds that this thing is going to inflict upon my delicate human body. But the juvenile's cute. Look at this little guy. You can tell he has a terrifying mouth too, right? He's got 18 rows of teeth just growing in. He's just, you know, there's little nubs right now. He's teething. You know, he's got all of these ice blocks to chew on to help soothe the teething pain. He's perfectly set up. He's going to be munching in just a few weeks. See, why couldn't it have stayed that? That's like half terrifying, half cute. The eyeball is absolutely cute. Now it just has to be this god-awful thing. Seriously? Anyway, right, so we got the squid shark, which we talked about last episode as well. The glow whale, which is a nice, uh, a nice addition, of course. Now, going to the twisty bridges, we can see here, this is the concept art, the current concept art of the twisty bridges, which is a biome that has been talked about and known about for a very long time now. I can't be certain that it's been worked on this entire time. I highly doubt it, but it's something that they've worked on enough that they can consider putting it into the expansion. Now it has been verified that this is actually going to be a thing, so great. Now, as you can see, there are different types of flora, what seems to be some interesting, almost uh, potato looking flora. You also have the swirly bits coming up. Now these bridges, as you can see right here, these bridges aren't as twisty as they used to be. This actually is the old concept art for the Twisty Bridges. You guys might recognize this particular piece of artwork. Beautiful, absolutely breathtaking view. And look, a female player. Holy crap. And what is this? A new creature? Has this thing been verified? I see other familiar creatures. I see gel sacks, things that I recognize, the barnacles. But this thing, it's got to be new. It's got to be a confirmed creature. Now, you know, if you really pay attention to this thing, it does kind of fit the theme that I was talking about earlier. How every creature in the Arctic DLC or the expansion pack seems to be rather deceiving. Its face is so cute to the point where this crazy underwater dive expert lady is reaching out to touch it. It's a foreign planet and I have no idea what you are, but I'm going to touch you to see what happens. What will happen is... This cute little bugger is going to place that hook 10 feet into your brain. Deception, people. Learn it. Understand it. So you will not be deceived. Don't trust anything on an alien planet. That's like 101 stuff. Anyway, back to the new concept art. There's a lot of fish that don't seem to have any kind of detail to them. Enough so we can tell what they are. We can speculate all day, but there's really not that much information. What I do like is the mix of the creature that we just saw in the Arctic underneath the water, that giant thing, and the potential deceivery that is also in this biome. If these are at all connected in any way, it will be an amazing thing to be chased out of the Arctic area from this serpent-like leviathan, turning around thinking you're safe in the twisty bridges and being fooled by almost every other twisty bridge in the distance, thinking that it's that creature still following you. I know that's exactly what would happen to me running away from it. I'm sure it'll be happening to other people too. So that's the Twisty Bridges. And this is a little bit on the Vesper because we got the information from a tweet, I believe from Corey Strader, that showed a picture from in-game with the data download information about the Vesper itself. It says the Vesper is an installation that will be present in the upcoming expansion pack. It will orbit Planet 4546B to serve as a base for research personnel, including the main protagonist of the expansion pack. There is currently no concept art for the Vesper, but the mention of the Vesper being a semi-permanent installation makes it seem like it will look something like the Apollo 11 command module. Something like this. Now that's not exactly what I picture in my mind when I think about the Vesper. But as the databank entry states, the Vesper is a semi-permanent installation designed to provide a sustainable environment for research personnel stationed far from Federation space. Once in geosynchronous orbit of a target planet, it deploys multiple ground-to-space elevators for energy-efficient resource transportation. Resource. Now, for those who don't know, geosynchronous means that the orbit of this station is perfectly tuned to the 
rotation of the planet itself. So creating this ground to space elevator from the ground to the station that is orbiting the planet, it will seemingly not move and just be stationary in the sky, even though it is in orbit. I know that's a bit complicated to wrap your head around, but it is, it is a thing that actually happens. So I imagine a much bigger station if there are going to be multiple ground to space elevators as it states in the databank entry it can't just be one that wouldn't make much sense i can imagine that you could potentially be as the character in control of deploying these ground to space elevators once you discover new areas to explore one for the arctic one for underneath the arctic one for the twisty bridges who knows now the first mission parameter says forensic examination and recovery of aurora wreckage again setting the time period to be after way after the aurora incident so no we're not going to be landing as the rocket from the the first player launches up into space saying oh crap if i was just if i crashed just a little bit earlier i could have made it i could have bummed a ride and of course the classified mission parameters probably has something to do with the precursors because the other ones kind of don't really tie into any of that and there's no way we're going to go to this planet without talking about how the precursors had dominated that area on the other side of the planet they likely have remnants in the arctic as well anyway so that is currently it for the information and concept arts that i have gathered that is available to the public now there are alternative sources to information that I don't quite trust and or I don't know if it will sit well with the developers. So I'm not going to be reporting on any of that information. I am going to be bringing you what you could potentially find yourself on the Subnautica Wiki and bring it up for discussion. If you guys want to read more of this on your own, links will obviously be down in the description below for you to do so. Now chat it up in the comments. I'd love to talk about it. What do you guys think about all of this information? How are you feeling about the mid-2019 potential release date for the DLC. Do you think that the longer they take, the more content that will be available? Do you think that it could potentially be something where it is as big as a second game, which will be all worth the wait? Let me know. Let's chat it up. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know this wasn't much of gameplay. It's really just information. And I know sometimes on the screen, it could have got a little boring. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell notification icon so you can get notified when I upload the next episode. I love you all. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.